so I just got done filming that like minute and a half thing that I put out like yesterday-ish about how I have things coming out. Uh, this is the update video and it's titled Academic Despair. And somehow I am way more alive than how dead in the eyes I was in this video that I just watched in preparation for this. Cut this in at the beginning of the video. I didn't take any time to explain the title. I don't think I did, at least I've been talking for a hot second now. So anyway, uh, Academic Despair, which I just Googled and I could not find anything like official on it. So I'm just saying to you how I feel about Academic Despair. Again, I'm a mathematician, aspiring mathematician, don't have the PhD by my name yet. Uh, so, uh, I am not like a psychologist or an academic sociologist or anything like that. So just take this with a grain of salt. This is how I, how I'm thinking about this thing. Um, but for me, academic despair is the point when you are pursuing academics and there is some form of like burnout or dread or, um, disdain associated with doing those academics and uh, for grad school folks, uh, sometimes this means like not wanting to do your research or just like getting to a point where you're just like, I should just find a job and get out uh, and all of that stuff. Um, it's just this overwhelming feeling that you're not gonna be successful doing this academic thing that you've decided that you would like to do. And, um, but yeah, so that's sort of the vibe that I'm going with, with when I say academic despair and talk about it in this video. So when this video was filmed, I was just done or just had told you all or had the energy to tell you all that I was done with my quals. And that's a really exciting thing. And I could, like, I had the whole like 15 seconds of screaming my apartment about how I did it um, when I got the email that I passed. But after that, I didn't have like the energy to be positive about it or to like sort of like let that positivity propel me forward into what was happening next. Um, so if you if you have watched this video, you might have noticed that I am kind of dull and a little bit like just vapid, I would say is a good word for it. And I think that's because of like the whole, you are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with. And that's kind of harsh. The caveat here is that when I say that, uh, I'm talking about in terms of my mathematical life. I kind of want to like take an aside to sort of describe how this sort of or to analogize it to something else that had happened in my life that is kind of also like a fun little story. So uh, when I was little, uh, when I was like three or four-ish, um, back when I was like, before I was in school, we were in North Carolina, and uh, I had this lime green calculator. It was like the size of the palm of my hand. And I would run around the house and I would uh, just tap the buttons and see what would come out. And I'd get really, really excited about it. And I would constantly, constantly run around to my parents and tell them what I plugged into the calculator and what I got out. And I also did this with my grandparents uh, on my dad's side. It was really cool to me. It was just like this very fascinating thing. And I had so much joy and just uh, like the excitement of discovery behind these things that I would plug into this lime green calculator. Uh, and one day that lime green calculator disappeared uh, as my parents, uh, or at least my mom would say is that I annoyed the crap out of them with that calculator. Uh, because I was just so fascinated by it and they knew that I was fascinated by it and they just wanted it to stop. So they took the calculator from me and they threw it out. I mean, they didn't like physically like rip it out of my hands, but just one day it wasn't there sort of thing. And so when the memory of that lime green calculator comes up or pops up in the background of my mathematical life and I identify feeling in some way similar to how it felt when I just like couldn't find the calculator or later on when I found out 
that my parents had like intentionally just thrown it out so that I could not annoy them with it anymore. It's usually a pretty good marker of I am currently experiencing academic despair. Uh, So this has been something that uh, since I passed the topology qual has come up in conversations with uh, my friends that know about the story and also my family. Uh, And it can make things very hard. So in the last update, I had mentioned that like things are uh, are kind of like slowing down and it's weird not having all these academic pressures, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, But the thing in the background of all of that was that I was dead in the eyes, right? I like didn't, didn't want to do anything. I wanted a break. I wanted to stop. I wanted to just coast for a semester. And I couldn't because uh, there was a whole wealth of material I had to read in preparation for the paper that I'm now reading. And I needed to like hit goals with that so that I could continue working with my advisor and all of these other things that were just like, you have to keep running. You have to keep running. So that's been a thing. And as the new year has come around and as I've started, you know, I've spent some time doing some non-math things. So like I finally started sharing my art on the internet, uh, which is something I sort of developed how I do it uh, during my COVID year of grad school. And it's, I felt confident enough in these last two pieces to go ahead and put them up uh, on the internet. Uh, And in particular, I made myself an academic website because jobs will be a thing in like a year and a half to two years that I need to start thinking about. So, um, Doing all that stuff, one of the things that I came into the new year with uh, just thinking about uh, and the past month of January thinking about uh, is just, well, who am I surrounding myself with? And this is where the whole, like, you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with comes into play in reference to my mathematical life, right? So uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, like, negativity around what I do. Uh, so, like, I'll, I'll bring up analysis or I'll bring up that I enjoy analysis and uh, almost universally throughout my department, uh, people like are like, that's gross. Um, and there are a few exceptions to that. And so the thing to recognize is that a lot of the people that I spend time with fall on the like, that's gross side of things when I talk about my stuff that I enjoy. And there aren't many of those people who are on my side when it comes to analysis or when I say analysis, they think complex analysis and I have to be like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about measures and like things like that. Since there's not like a huge well of positivity around me about the type of stuff that I think about and enjoy, uh, I think the best way to combat it has been to just find two types of people. First type of person is someone who is just exceptionally enthusiastic about what they do. Independent of what anyone else says they find whatever they do or what thing fascinates them fascinating and they will tell you about it and uh, they'll tell you about it for as long as you will sit there and listen and uh, when a lot of that joy has been sucked out of you by just negativity that you're around um, I think people like this are really important to getting back that joy for what you do however there's like, you have to be careful. So you have to make sure that when you're spending time with these people that you're not sucking their joy out of them. Uh, So I like intentionally am trying to spend time with people who are enthusiastic and also like enter it with the mindset of like what we're going to do. I may not like have like a great view of it currently, but I am going to go into it with like a positive mindset and I'm not going to tear down uh, this thing that they enjoy. Uh, So that's one side of it. And then the other side of it is to spend time with people where they are driven or that there is circumstance and stakes where they want the outcome to be, I am going to be an academic or a PhD and I'm going to succeed. That other group of people is like really, really important as well because uh, you can be enthusiastic and have no direction and still be in this like weird place of despair. Because if you like really enjoy something and there's nowhere to go with it, 
uh, it can feel defeating or self-defeating. Uh, so spending time with these people where there are, there are circumstance and stakes uh, on the line for their process sort of like gives me direction as well uh, in a different way. Like, I mean, it's, it's different, right? Like different problems, different people, different points of grad school. And, but the analogy doesn't totally work or the, the, the idea doesn't totally translate. But yeah, so combating academic despair, that's what I'm currently doing. It's, it's going to be different depending on what scenario you're in and uh, what you're currently approaching and dealing with. But for me, this is what's working right now or what I feel like is has a positive direction to it right now. And that's kind of where I want to leave this video. So anyway, uh, just because we're cutting it there, uh, as always, my name is Nathan. This was Chocolist, just another update about how PhD things were going. Uh, if you enjoyed this update, you can go watch my other updates, including the last one where I was kind of just dead in the face because I was very tired after taking all of those tests and realizing I had to sprint still in order to get to research. So um, that's there. There are other updates uh, that go all the way back to, I think, when I was accepted. So um, it's been quite quite a while of stuff. Uh, there's also one-off math videos on here about things that I find interesting uh, and talks I've given as well. And uh, the proofwriting series has come back. So uh, there will be a video that comes out about that stuff soon. The first two episodes with like just the basic uh, set and logic stuff are already up. And I really need to finish... Um, finish working on that because I had all these plans and then just whole oh, the whole like I really don't want to do anything hit pretty hard and the place where I could not do anything was here so um yeah anyway that's it I will see you next time bye bye